Young Show. Good evening, and welcome to Miss Young's living room. I'm your announcer, Bob Wilson, and I'm very proud to present the star of our show, Miss Loretta Young. Hello. I received an awfully cute letter last week from a little girl, and it's a very sound one, too. Dear Mrs. Young, she says, I'm glad you're on television because I get to stay up late Sunday night. I wish I didn't have to take a nap, though, on account of it. Please send me a picture. What is that shiny thing on the wall? And who is clapping their hands every time you walk into the living room? How many kids you got? Nobody claps for mommy. Goodbye. And don't forget now, lots of love, Betty Jane Herman. Well, lots of love to you too, honey. Now, first of all, that shiny thing on the wall is an antique. And it's called a sunburst. It was a Christmas present to us from my mother. Next, there's no connection between that clapping noise and my three children. Although, they can make more noise than that any time they put their minds to it. And now, about this living room. Well, it's a copy of my own living room at home. And I have about, oh, 75 friends here who bring my living room right into yours each week. Magic, isn't it? How about it, fellas? Say hello to Betty Jane, huh? Oh, it's got a nice sound. You know what I'd like you to do? Share it with your mommy. But believe me, there's nothing like a little applause to brighten up the house on a moody day, huh? Our uh, letter this week, I believe, is... Well, it's too personal to read in detail. But I would like to sum it up because it's a serious situation. It's from a woman, 32 years old, who is planning to abandon her plan to marry a very nice man, from what she says, because... Her father, a well-to-do retired lawyer, has decided that, that he couldn't be happy with his only daughter away from him and married. Well, perhaps it would help these three people concerned if I recall another such situation. A father at retirement age and one of his famous daughters, Charlotte Bronte, and her suitor. In Haworth, Yorkshire, England, exactly 100 years ago, I don't know whatever your papa is going to say about rugs and drapes in the sitting room. Oh, he'll change his mind, Mary. He must. And that dress. Yes. Yes, it really looks like Paris, doesn't it? It's so elegant. And so sophisticated. <laughs> but Charlotte, it's so red. Oh, Mary, why should everyone think of red as a shameful color? It's so warm and full of light. That's why I chose red for the draperies. Charlotte Bronte, whatever has come over you, <laughs> you're not the same person at all. I know. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? Mary, let's try these in the hall. Do you like this one? Or is this better? I don't know. Now, let me see again. Yeah. Goodbye, Mr. Bronte. I've enjoyed the visit. Oh, good morning, Miss Loughton. Good morning, Reverend Nichols. Do you approve, Reverend Nichols? Oh, it, it's beautiful beyond words, Miss Bronte. Oh. Uh, what are the color? It's, it's most becoming, Miss Bronte. Oh. What is becoming? What are you discussing, Charlotte? Why, the thought we, uh, we were discussing the carpets and the draperies. The samples arrived from London just this morning. I told you my decision concerning that. You will send them back immediately. There will be no pampering of the flesh in this house. But there's nothing sinful about being warm. And indeed, I shan't send them back. And besides, Papa, you'll feel quite differently about it once you become accustomed to them. I shall not discuss the matter with you, Charlotte. You will immediately return them. What is that? That garment you are wearing. It's a dress, Papa. A Paris creation. A creation of the devil. But 
you don't understand. It, it's the latest fashion. It's scarlet. A scarlet of shame. Go to your room immediately and remove it. Please, Papa, you must listen. I... I don't intend to wear it outside of the house. I just wanted to... Isn't it enough that... that I've been shamed before the world by a drunken son? Please. Must my one remaining child flaunt herself in a gown of scarlet like a Jezebel? Please, Papa, please. Shameless. Go to your room and burn that garment of Satan. I... Go. Do you hear me? Obey me at once. <sighs> Charlotte, come back here. Don't dare to leave the house dressed like that. Mr. Nichols, go after her at once. She's out of her mind. I think that's entirely possible, Mr. Bronte. I think I'd better go on home. Afraid to stand before the world and say, here I am, world, this is me. Not something that my father's molded, but what I've made myself to be. The responsibility's mine. Well, I, I suppose I have run away. I, I guess we all did. Bramwell in his way, and Emily, and Anne, and I, and our books. Arthur, do you know that we never even admitted to Papa that we wrote? And Papa, for his part, he, he's never read one thing we've written. He just pretends the books don't exist. Why don't you prove it to him? Give him Jane Eyre to read. Oh, Arthur! <laughs> I can just imagine what would happen. Why, the very timbers of the house would rattle. Well, they would. You know they would. Oh, Arthur, I'm so grateful for you. Oh, what did I ever do before I had you? And now that you do have... When are you going to do something about it? You, you mean tell Papa? Arthur, why not you? Why don't you tell him? After all, it is your place to ask him for his blessing, isn't it? No. Because I want you for a wife. Not a piece of fiction from a novel. I see. Well, would you be with me? I mean, could we go together? Could you tell him then? Yes, I think so. But, oh, I know he'll not approve. And what if he refuses again? You know he never listens to me. He treats me as if I were a child. Charlotte. And... You're not a child. No. I know I'm not. All right. All right, Arthur. Come on. There's something I must tell you. It, it's very important. Oh, father, is it? It's usually papa. It must be important indeed. Oh, it is, father. I mean papa. I... I am sure, however, that it is not so important that it cannot wait until you have changed into a dress becoming a lady. And until we can speak of it privately. But you see, Papa... I it... can see that you are again demonstrating a remarkable disinclination to behave as a dutiful daughter. No. Once more, I ask you to retire to your room and change that dress. Father. Mr. 
Nichols has something he wants to say to your father. Hmm. Well, Mr. Nichols, I'm sorry that you should have been a witness to such scenes as have taken place here this afternoon. I trust you'll forgive us. Mr. Bronte, Charlotte and I would like your consent to our marriage. Indeed. Hmm. Well, now, let's see. Uh, this matter has come up before, I think. Twice before, to be exact. Yes, sir. But this time, she's accepted me. I see. Hmm. So a red dress can change a woman entirely. I'm afraid not entirely, sir. What is that? Uh, nothing, sir. May we have your blessing? Well, now, uh, bless me, I, I don't know. Uh, we'll have to think this over. I, I must discuss it with Charlotte, of course. I think it only fair to tell you, sir, that I intend to marry her in any event. It seems a remarkable attitude for you to take, Mr. Nichols, as my confidant, my trusted friend. As your confidant and your friend, sir, I respect your feelings. As a man, I expect to devote my life to making Charlotte happy. I see. Yes. Well, I suppose I can't quarrel with that sentiment very well. Very well, Mr. Nichols, if this be my daughter's wish. Papa! Papa, as you know, I've, I've written a book, and it's called... Jane Eyre. I would like you to read it. Hmm. Jane Eyre, eh? Well, I, uh, I must read it, of course. Oh. And now, if you'll excuse me, I have some writing of my own to do. I weren't so happy for you, I'd be jealous. Oh, Mary. Not even a London bride could have a more magnificent array of gifts. Mary, <gasps> look. How lovely. Oh. And from such fearfully famous people. Oh. Oh. Look, even Mr. Thackeray himself. Yes. You must be the happiest bride and the proudest that the sun ever shone upon. I you. am, Mary, I am. Come now, we must hurry. Just a minute. I'll get the part. One moment, please. Papa? What is it, Charlotte? Come in. It's almost time to rehearse the But, Papa, you're not dressed. I'm afraid you'll have to go without me, Charlotte. These weak spells come over me, and I haven't the strength for anything. But you should have told me. I didn't know you were ill. I'll send for the doctor at once. Uh, no, no, no. It's, it's nothing that a doctor can help. Old bodies wear out, that's all. Oh, nonsense, Papa. You're going to live forever. Believe that if it's any comfort to you, Charlotte. In any case, this is not an illness of the body, but of the heart. Oh, please, Papa, please. Oh, well, it's no great matter. Life has not been so kind to me that I should dread to leave it. Charlotte, we're going to be late. Yes, Mary, yes, I'm coming. Are you sure you won't change your mind? I must go, and I don't want to leave you alone. No. No, you go along to your pleasure, child. I must get used to being alone. Charlotte, darling. Yes, Mary, I'm coming. I'll be back soon, Father. Papa, don't be lonely.
mustn't feel badly. Oh, you caught me in my sorrow, my dear. I shouldn't have let you do that. Oh, but there's nothing to be sorrowful about. I talked it over with Arthur. And we're going to stay here in this house with hmm? you. Well, that would be very nice. But it won't be the same thing, of course. Uh, no. No, that's not what I was thinking of. What were you thinking of? I was wishing that I might have the chance to try again. Just for a little while. What if I were to say, Charlotte, carpet and curtain this house however you may wish. Wear what you please, write what you please. What then, my dear? You mean... You mean I can change these dreary rooms? Yes, if you wish to, Charlotte. Oh, Papa, what a lovely wedding gift. Oh, thank you. Thank you for both Arthur and me. Now, let me see. I think, yes, I think velour on those windows. And for the carpet in here, huh? Oh, Papa, this is going to be so much fun. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Papa. Mary, what's that lovely thing you're carrying? Whatever it's for. Here, let me help you with it. Oh, don't you dare touch this gown, Arthur Nichols. What are you doing here anyway? Don't you know it's bad luck to see the bride before the wedding? Rank superstition. And besides, I'm here on official business. Will you present this to Her Majesty and inform her of my presence? Hmm. Much good it'll do you. It's only an hour till time for the service, and she'll never see you on her wedding morning. She'll see me. What must heaven be like? Very like this, I should think. Oh. Carla. Yes, Papa? I've changed my mind. There'll be no wedding today. Uh, whatever do you mean? Just what I said. I've wrestled with my conscience all night and my mind is made up. This marriage is not in your best interests. I'll not permit but, it. But, Papa, you, you... You can't do this. I can. And I will. But, but the guests, they're all gathering at the church. Send them word to go home. And the presents, Papa. Return them. Father, please. You don't know what you're doing. Please, I'll not Father. discuss it further, Charlotte. You... Where are you going, Mr. Nichols? To Charlotte, Mr. Brotty. Have you any objections? Charlotte. Arthur, help me. Help me, help me, Arthur, help me. I can't, me. darling, I can't. This is the lonely place. No one can help you now but yourself. Please, please. I can't, I can't. You must. How, Arthur? By doing what's right. How? I don't know what's right anymore. I don't know. Oh, Arthur, the scripture tells us to honor our parents and I try. But it does tell us that, doesn't it? Yes. But don't we honor them less rather than more when we encourage them in the way of selfishness? What does that mean? Charlotte, you know the prayer. Forgive us the sins we cause in others. Yes. Yes, I do. Selfishness is a sin, Charlotte. Can you, in good conscience, continue to encourage your father in it? No. No, I can't. Then you must go to him and tell him so. Could... Could you go with me? No, dearest. You must do this by yourself. Everyone must learn to walk alone, Charlotte, before they can walk with someone else. Please. I love you, dearest. Arthur! Where are you going? 
I'm going to pray for strength for you. You are not going to stop me, Papa. This is my wedding day. I told you, Charlotte, that my mind was made up. I'll not give my consent. Well, then we shall have to do without it. Ridiculous. What would the people say if I were not present at your wedding? You'd disgrace me before the world. Better disgrace there, Papa. Than in your heart. I've heard enough of this nonsense. You stop behaving like a spoiled child and go immediately to your room. No. No, I will not let you do this to me. For both our sakes. Charlotte, I'm acting in your best interests, and you know it. You're not going to disobey me in so serious a matter as this. And you know that too. May we walk to the church together. Anyone who knows the Bronte story, and so many people do, knows too that we've taken some liberties with the accounting of this one incident in Charlotte's life. Not so much as the answer to this letter tonight, but as food for further thought. Later, of course, Charlotte's father gave his blessing to her marriage. And I imagine that was because none of us, young or old or sick or well, is ever made truly happy at the price of unhappiness to those we love. And oh my, it's a wise person who realizes that before it's too late. Well, good night. See you next week.